Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and we're going to continue our series on the adrenal gland hormones and differences in sexual development that arise from the adrenal gland. And so last time we talked about 21 hydroxylase deficiency and what that looks like in a fetus. And today we're going to look at something very similar, uh, which is 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, which follows a very similar mechanism to uh, that of 21 hydroxylase. However, there is a key difference in this pathway that causes the presentation to be almost exactly the opposite of what you see with 21 hydroxylase deficiency. Um, so if, if you're looking at the pathway and nothing makes sense, please go back and watch my previous videos about the adrenal hormones because we have three separate pathways here that we're working with. Uh, but if everything is a-okay, makes a lot of sense to you, then you can stick around. Uh, go ahead and watch this pathway. It'll be a great time. So we're gonna talk today about 11-beta-hydroxylase, which is a common enzyme in both the aldosterone and cortisol pathways. So once again, if you would like a little challenge for yourself, pause the video right here, go through this pathway, see if you can figure out how this is going to present, and then you can start the video again and see if you got the answer right. But let's just get right into this pathway. And I think I'm gonna use orange today, um, just so it stands out a little bit more. Um, so we are going to once again have an X, X fetus, so someone that would uh, typically present with female internal genitalia and female external genitalia. And uh, the process is going to be the same as it always has been. We have cholesterol, which enters the cell. It is converted by cholesterol desmolase to pregnenolone, which is converted by 3-beta-HSD to progesterone. But today, 21-hydroxylase is working, so we do produce 11-deoxycorticosterone. Uh, and this is a really important point, and I'll get into this in a second. So I'll, I'll just do that. So we have all of these, but then 11-beta-hydroxylase is non-functional. So can we make corticosterone? Nope, can't do it. Can we make aldosterone? Nope, can't do that. So uh, as I described last time, if we cannot move forward in the pathway, we're going to go backwards. It's going to back up. So we're going to have an increase an 11 deoxycorticosterone, we're gonna have an increase in progesterone, increase in pregnenolone. These are going to spill over and it's going to now favor the 17 alpha hydroxylase pathway. And we're gonna produce 17 hydroxypregnenolone, 17 hydroxyprogesterone, so we have these. 21 hydroxylase is functional, so we are going to produce 11 deoxycortisol, but once again, 11 beta hydroxylase is not working. So can we make cortisol? No, we cannot. Can we make cortisone? Nope, can't do that. So can't go that way, have to go backwards. Pathway's gonna back up. So we're gonna have increased 11 deoxycortisol, increased 17 hydroxyprogesterone, increased 17 hydroxypregnenolone. So where else can we go? Once again, we can follow the 1720 lyase pathway. We're gonna favor this direction and we're going to favor androgen production. Can we make DHEA? Yeah, we can. Can we make androstenedione? Yeah. Can we make testosterone? Yep, so we're, uh, since this is the only way that we can go, we're gonna have increased DHEA, increased androstenedione, increased testosterone. So we're gonna have a high amount of androgens in this fetus. And something important to note, um, looking at this pathway, we're gonna have high androgens but we're also going to have high 11-deoxycorticosterone, and this is really important right here. Because, um, as we know, we don't have aldosterone production, but 11-deoxycorticosterone does function as a mineral corticoid. So even though we don't specifically have aldosterone, the body essentially thinks it does. We think we still have aldosterone. So we are going to function as if we have a high amount of aldosterone. And this is where the difference is going to happen uh, with this presentation as opposed to 21 hydroxylase deficiency. So let me write out our presentation. Okay, so our end result here um, we are going to have XX masculinization. 
So the uh, clitoris is going to look more like a small penis. The um, labia might look like a small scrotum um, because we have a high amount of testosterone that is influencing those anatomical structures. So we're going to have ambiguous genitalia, uh, but internal anatomy is all going to be female. Um, and then we're going to have precocious puberty once again, uh, if this starts in childhood because of the increased androgens, a precocious puberty. And once again, this is a great time to use Luprolide. So if you have not watched my video about Luprolide, please go do that. Um, and then I'm gonna write out kind of our other factors that we were looking at last time. So we were looking at blood pressure, we we're looking at sodium, and we we're looking at potassium. And in this case, our blood pressure is going to be high. And so when we see this in infancy, uh, they're going to present with um, hypertension and babies don't usually have hypertension. So if you have a baby with high blood pressure, this is something you might need to look at. Um, if you remember 21 hydroxylase deficiency had low blood pressure because we didn't have aldosterone or 11 deoxycorticosterone. But now that we do have this mineral corticoid, we are going to have a high blood pressure. And how do we get this high blood pressure? Well, that is because we are absorbing sodium. So we have high sodium, which causes our high blood pressure. So we are retaining fluid. And then in that, every time that we absorb sodium, we are going to get rid of potassium. So we're gonna have decreased potassium. And this is something called hypokalemia, uh, which can also result in um, cardiac arrhythmias. And that can be kind of dangerous as well. Um, and then just so that we have this here, our aldosterone levels are going to be low. Our cortisol levels are going to be low. And our androgen levels are going to be high. And so this is what we are going to see with uh, deficiencies in 11-beta-hydroxylase. Uh, I hope all of this made sense to you and I have really enjoyed making these videos. So please leave your questions and comments down below. Um, hit uh, the like button on this video. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you all in the next one.